I managed to bundle together another 15 Half-Life easter eggs you may not know about. These will range from all Half-Life games, which means Half-Life 1, Half-Life Opposing Force, Half-Life Blue Shift, Half-Life DK, Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Episode 1, Half-Life 2 Episode 2 and Half-Life 2 Lost Coast, which to be fair isn't featured, but it could be. Again, if you are an avid watcher of Half-Life content, you may know about most of these, but perhaps you'll still enjoy getting your knowledge refreshed. Before we do that, 95% of you aren't subscribed. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. The first easter egg is a movie reference to Kleiner's lab. You may have seen these boxes below Kleiner's desk. These boxes actually look the exact same as a box seen in Back to the Future in this scene. These boxes are mentioned to be stolen in the movie. So perhaps this is Half-Life's canon on who stole the plutonium boxes. The second easter egg is one you couldn't notice slash find without cheats. This one can be found in Half-Life 1. In Half-Life 1, whenever enemies were teleported in from Zen, they would be placed in a box outside of the map and wait to be teleported in. In the map C1A1C, the one with the large freight elevator, if you no-clip into this box and turn on your flashlight, you will find the Box of Gaben. This is also, I'm pretty sure, the only time this texture is ever seen in Half-Life. The third easter egg is actually an addition to one I mentioned in the first part, which you should, by the way, definitely check out if you haven't yet. In that video I mentioned a classic HEV charger part that can be found in Eli's junkyard. There is actually another one of these hidden in episode 2. It's in this room, hidden behind this gate and some crates. The fourth easter egg is found at the Half-Life 1 training room levels. This door has quite a few lines to say the more you try to get through it. Access denied. Access is denied. Unauthorized access. Illegal access. This door is locked. Unauthorized access. Entry forbidden. Entry not permitted. No unauthorized personnel. You do not have access to this facility. Sorry, you may not enter. Sorry, this door is locked. Please move away from this area. Please move away from the door. You will not get in. Entry is not an option. Will we do this all day? Move on immediately. No, no, and move. The fifth easter egg is one that I'm sure very few of you know of. In the train station you will come across this giant clock. Did you know that written on that clock is the name Wright Backwell, a reference to a former developer of Half-Life 2? The sixth easter egg is one that you should already be aware of, which is that the names on the lockers of Half-Life 1 are all references to Valve employees like Laidlaw for Mark Laidlaw, Bailey for Kelly Bailey, or Kuma for Greg Kuma. The seventh easter egg is the console in couple which you first meet in the beginning levels of Half-Life 2. Throughout the games you will see it a bunch of more times. The first time they may be seen again is this couple that is getting beaten up by Metro Cops. They use the same models, and as the guy on the ground is still moving, it can be presumed he survived. This one is less noticeable though, due to them not being in their usual sitting position. Later in Anti-Citizen 1, they appear once again in an apartment. They are now wearing rebel clothing. In Half-Life 2 Episode 1, they can be seen once we enter this building where we meet Barney. In episode 2, we find two dead skeletons on a couch in a similar pose. This is probably only an easter egg though, since they can be seen another time in White Forest. This is thus far the last time we have seen them. The eighth easter egg can be found on the broken Bream monitors you find throughout the game. In this broken state, it's possible to see a frame of G-Man in them. Which does pose some interesting questions. Is Freeman the only one that is able to see this? Can everyone see it? What is G-Man trying to achieve by appearing for a fraction of a second on random monitors? I guess we'll never know. The ninth easter egg is a pretty rare one that was only found 20 years after the game came out. The game in question being Half-Life DK. Half-Life DK, in case you somehow navigated the Half-Life community without knowing yet, was a PlayStation 2 exclusive multiplayer Half-Life 1 expansion made by Gearbox. The same people that made Opposing Force and Blue Shift. The PlayStation 2 exclusivity and the fact that you need a friend to play it being the reason that many people in the Half-Life community haven't ever played it. In the final cutscene you usually see through Gina's perspective. The cutscene can be forced to be seen through Colette's perspective instead though. From her point of view there is a sparking computer scene for a brief moment. It has randomly appearing electricity sparks, 
which if all of them are enabled, it will reveal a MA signature. This is a signature of the Gearbox developer Matt Armstrong. Big shout out to Marfitimus Blackimus for his video on this. Check it out for even more details on this easter egg. The 10th easter egg is a reference to the hip-hop duo Blue Scholars. The name of them can be found on the security camera prop that is seen in Kainas and Eli's lab. The 11th easter egg is also an addition to an easter egg of the first part. Specifically, an addition to the Freeman zip code easter egg that is seen on certain cars throughout Half-Life 2 and its episodes. This zip code is also found on this particular graffiti. In case you didn't watch the first one or forgot, this set of numbers are the zip code to a place called Freeman. The 12th easter egg is also a pretty popular one. It takes place in both Half-Life Opposing Force and Blue Shift. Near the end of Half-Life Opposing Force, right before you enter the room where you see Freeman entering the teleporter, shoot at this vent. After you do enough damage to it, the vent right next to it will break and out of it will come a jump toad. This fella can't do anything special. It's just kinda cute. It's seen again in Blue Shift. After getting your gun and collecting all the ammo, you have to shoot every single bullet you receive into this box in your locker. Only if you truly fire each bullet into it, it will open and you'll see a jump toad once again. Then, later on in Blue Shift, once you're in Zen, you can swim down this pit, break open a side path and then get into Chum Toad's lair. The three Chum Toads that you find in this room teleport away shortly afterwards. You'll also find some ammo for the snark slaying here. The 13th easter egg also takes place in Opposing Force in Blue Shift. At three separate occasions you can find an image of developer Rob Hieronymus with X in front of his eyes. The first time is in Opposing Force, when you use the displacer to get into the hazard course. The second time is in Blue Shift's beginning area where you can see it in this toilet that is out of service by peeking inside of it. The final time we have ever seen it is later in Blue Shift, in an air duct in Captive Fright. The 14th easter egg cap is right at the start of the Enter Citizen 1 chapter. Once you climb into this building and peek around the corner here, you will see a TV showing G-Man with a bird on his shoulder. You can also noclip out of the world and go there. Definitely one of the more weird G-Man sightings. An interesting detail about this one I noticed while trying to gather footage in Half-Life 2 Update, the version of Half-Life 2 with updated graphics that released a couple years ago, there is no bird on G-Man's shoulder. Not sure what this means, but it's an interesting thing to note. The final easter egg for today is what is most likely a reference to the Super Mario games. In this level in Enter Citizen 1, there is a headcrab that is scripted to simply move back and forth between two pipes, and it can be killed by stomping on it. Poor little guy. But it reminds a lot of the Goombas seen in all the Super Mario games. Wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo was to sue Valve for this one. So yeah, what easter eggs do you want to see me cover next? Should I perhaps do an easter egg video on Entropy Zero 2? If you think so, let me know some easter eggs in Entropy Zero 2 that you know of. So yeah, otherwise, consider subscribing and thank you for watching.